So finally, the much-awaited SEBI board meet has completed and we uh, they have released two consultation papers. One is the consultation paper on the portfolio manager's regulation and the other is the much-awaited uh, uh, REITs, that is the Real Estate Investment Trust. Uh, there have been quite a few, uh, uh, quite a few changes that we have, amendments that they have uh, uh, asked for. Basically, these consultation papers are through which they will be asking for public comments. Uh, so talking about REITs specifically, uh, uh, the SEBI, uh, after the SEBI board meet, the consultation paper says that there will be changes in the number of sponsors. Currently, there are three existing sponsors that are allowed under REITs. And the other one being the rationalization of compliance for related party transactions. This, as we had pointed out earlier also, this was one thing which uh, SEBI was trying to dwell upon. Also, there is a restriction has been removed on the SPVs. Uh, SPV being a holding company, SPVs which are holding the assets under uh, the real estate, uh, the, the, basically the real estate assets. So these are the two, three uh, major things that uh, has been brought under the consultation paper for seeking uh, public comments. Now we have with us Mr. Bhairav Dalal, the partner of PwC, who is joining us on this. Uh, Mr. Uh, Dalal, I just wanted to ask you the rationalization of compliance with uh, related to uh, 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 related party transactions. How do you see this helping the overall uh, overall uh, REITs uh, mechanism as such? Will it compel uh, more uh, real estate players to go via the medium? Because as of now, as we know, there are no uh, applications with SEBI for uh, uh, registering under REITs by any of these companies. So what, according to you, will this help? And also the change in the number of sponsors. Uh, although they haven't specified the number of sponsors, but we guess it'll be around four to five sponsors from the existing three. So what is your view on this, sir? Yeah, so on, on the first one, I think the rationalization with respect to related party transactions could have uh, three effects. One is, yes, it will it will have uh, the developers get incentivized because there was just too many compliance requirements and too many tests to be done for any sort of uh, related party transaction. So at the end of the day, if some of these measures are relaxed, uh, it will it'll help uh, people to set up REITs and not, not really worry about doing the documentation and all of that with respect to related party transactions. So it's a, it's a good step. The second way it could help is there were a lot of, lot of corporates and the third work category was banks who were, who were looking at uh, REITs as an option to uh, make their balance sheet a little lighter, especially, you know, remove the real estate assets out of it. Uh, there, this, this uh, was a major hurdle and I think if this rationalization happens, that will be a big boost to corporates who are doing, who are evaluating proprietary REITs and banks who are evaluating bank REITs. Okay. So, uh, sir, also the number of sponsors that you uh, were talking about, if we increase the number of sponsors, will that be also aid the overall uh, mechanism? Yes, it, it will because it will help uh, more people come together and uh, form a single REIT, which will be a good product in the market to start with, I would say. Now let's go to Mr. Dinesh Kanabar, the CEO of Dhruva Advisors. Before going to you, sir, I'll just go through the, I'll just recap the overall uh, uh, amendments that have been put in the consultation paper. The one being the removal of the restrictions on the special purpose vehicles. Uh, these are basically the holding assets, which will be the, re, uh, the real estate assets, which will be coming under the, uh, uh, which will be coming under the REITs mechanism. So this is one. Also, uh, they, uh, SEBI has said that they will be allowing uh, to invest up to 20% in the under construction assets. So, sir, will this also help uh, aid the mechanism as such? Uh, will, uh, will this will be one step in that direction to increase the uh, companies to help companies uh, in, uh, basically raise funds through this mechanism? Uh, Mr. Kanabar, your take on this. So, first, uh, uh, the fact of the matter is that uh, despite all attempts and significant amount of liberalization, we practically haven't seen any reads happen at all. And there are two or three things which we needed to be taken care of. First was on the tax aspect, which happened in the budget, where capital gains, etc., etc., has now been exempted. We still have stamp duty issues, and stamp duty issues arise uh, when there is a transfer of asset from an SPV uh, to the REIT entity. Uh, the changes which have been announced today, and we have to go through the fine print, are all again step in absolutely the right direction. Uh, the point which you made uh, with regard to the fact that you can invest 20% into under construction asset is a very, very welcome thing uh, because it will allow not only rent farming, but will allow REITs to go beyond that and will allow deployment of funds uh, into asset creation, which actually should be the primary purpose for a REIT. So I would say this is a step in the right direction, but we still have a few things which are remaining, which need to be done so that REITs can actually start to happen. 
want to interrupt you on this. 20% uh, if I can invest up to 20% in uh, under construction asset and if there is a time lag or some kind of an hindrance in the construction will it affect the investors will it uh, so do you think the interest of the investors won't be safeguarded in this uh, regard if because we see in India especially with real estate assets <laughs> there have been delay in constructions happening so will that be an issue for investors who are looking to invest. So two things which will happen if that if the proposal is that investment will happen under construction assets, then it is only reputed builders who have the ability to deliver on time, who will be able to get investment under such uh, uh, REITs issues. Others will not really find favor. And again, uh, I'm very sure that when one is making a REITs issue and one is proposing to deploy funds in under construction asset, there will be inbuilt safeguard mechanisms because under construction can meet a number of things. It can be from ground level up to a project which is 80% complete and has only 20% to go. So, I, I, so it, it will just mean that the reputed builders who have consistent track record of delivering on time are the guys who will be supporting, who will be supported uh, in such a deed issuance. Uh, Mr. Ashwin Parekh is with us. Uh, Mr. Parekh just wanted to get a sense of what do you make of these uh, changes that have been uh, uh, said by the uh, regulator basically. It's just a consultation paper I understand but how do you think is it a step in the direction because uh, as Mr. Kanabar also pointed out we haven't seen any applications coming by uh, from any of these real estate companies. So the, uh, the, five, uh, 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 the five amendments that have been proposed do you think that, uh, that will help basically propel uh, investments through this medium? Uh, it will help. I mean, what seems to be happening, the impression I'm getting, is that the entire subject of rates, basically, you know, the regulator is, I mean, when we started the whole journey, was trying to put a lot of controls, and there were several open issues, including, as Mr. Kanabar pointed out, uh, the stamp duty, the taxation and all. What seems to be happening now is the regulator is taking the cognizance of you know, the market impact of some of the changes that he is making. After making some of the changes that he did last time, even if after that we find that there have been no, uh, let's say, uh, 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 no issuance of, 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 let's say, any scheme or any particular rate steps come so far, then it meant, you know, that perhaps more, uh, let's say, liberal environment is essential. So that was one. 20% under construction, as Mr. Kanaba said quite clearly, you know, what could happen is that the investor can evaluate who are the builders or who are the developers behind. They can take a risk call in terms of the probability of delivery happening. By and large, I would say, I mean, we've come a little long way. A few small issues remain. But I think as an added asset class for savers, and particularly mid-size and small-size savers, uh, this is a good move, I would say. Certainly, it's, it becomes one more a class of assets that they can hold in their in their portfolio. Thanks a lot for joining us, uh, Mr. Parekh, Mr. Kanabar, as well as Mr. Dalal. Uh, thank you for joining us on CNBC TV 18, sir.